sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here with a video comparing the 2020 projected White Sox lineup and um, um, uh, rotation, bench, all of that good stuff. And the Kansas City Royals lineup, bench, pitching rotation, what have you. Uh, if you recall, I did a 2020 White Sox comparison to the 2020 projected Minnesota Twins because they are our biggest competition and a divisional opponent. And now I have the another divisional opponent and one that I think <clears throat> is probably going to end up being better than Cleveland, even. I think that the Royals are ready to take the next step to go above Cleveland. Because Cleveland is basically selling everybody off. They've already traded Kluber to Texas. They're looking to trade Lindor. And if they ever trade Lindor, then yeah. I mean, they may even finish below Detroit. But, yeah, I think... Uh, I think Kansas City has made some strides. They have some young players who played a lot last year and should be ready to take another step. So I think that they, I mean, they're not going to finish above the White Sox. Certainly not. But I think they will probably be the third place team in the division. So, um, so let's get into it. Now, if you remember the last time, I had forgotten to put Lewis Robert on the team, on an oversight on my part. And since then, he has actually been locked up by the White Sox, so we know that he will be on the team. Um, and then that kind of bumped a couple of things around. And I also forgot to put uh, Jimmy Cordero on the, on the sheet the last time. Now, again, there's so many relievers that the White Sox have that who knows? Who knows if Jimmy Cordero is actually going to be on the big club instead of like, um, I don't know, uh, Luis, Luis Rivera, Ruiz, Luis Ruiz, um, or um, Dylan Covey. I mean, they have so many guys that could potentially be making the rotation that I think with the bullpen or, or making the bullpen that I think it's the White Sox bullpen is probably going to be something that's going to be determined in spring training. So, like a guy like Jimmy Cordero, and there was another, um, the commenter, um, the person that commented last time also mentioned someone else. Oh, Dunning, Dane Dunning. Is Dane Dunning even ready? And if he is ready, is he better than all these guys? I don't know. See, I, again, I think that that's something that's going to have to be determined in spring training. So anyway, in the last video, I went pretty much, I went over this, uh, you know, the White Sox lineup. You got Lewis Robert. Now, this is, again, I don't know if this is going to be the lineup. Only Ricky Renneria knows this. But wouldn't it be nice to lead off with Lewis Robert if he's really as explosive as everybody says and, um, you know, fearless on the bases and can steal and run like the wind? Then maybe you want him leading off and then Tim Anderson batting second. And then Moncada batting third. And then Jose Abreu playing first base. Then Encarnacion at DH. Yes, Monty Grandal at catcher. Eloy Jimenez in left. And Nomar Mazara playing right field. And then, of course, we have Mendic Madrigal at second base. And the latest update that I've seen online even projects possibly Lurie Garcia now playing at second base. Who knows? You know who knows? Ricky Renneria. Or if he doesn't know yet, he will know. But I don't think we do. So now we've got the uh, rotation. This time, now you'll remember the last time I had Dylan C. slash Kopech. This time, I've um, what I saw online had... Dylan sees. So I'm going to stick with that and I'm going to say Giolito, Keichel, Lopez, Gonzalez, Dylan sees. Up here we've got Kopech with a question mark. Who knows? You know, 
you know, if he's going to make the club, I mean, he, he's probably fully recovered from his Tommy John surgery. So that's not the question. The question is, I suppose, how does he look in spring training? And then if he looks good, do they put him in the bullpen? So now the other bullpen pieces, I've got Cordero, Alex Colome, um, Bummer, Evan Marshall, Carson Fulmer, Jace Fry, Kelvin Herrera. Now, the last time I also had Dylan Covey on here, but now, really, as I reassess it and I look at these guys in the bullpen and I look at Dylan Covey's um, track record, I'm thinking, I don't know. I mean, unless he pulls a rabbit out of his hat and he's awesome in spring training. And, I mean, let's face it, I don't see that happening. So, um, you know, maybe Dylan Covey is not going to make the team. And then the bench, I've got Lurie Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, Adam Engel. I really want to see Engel make this team. I love Adam Engel. Okay, can I just tell you that? Just between you and me? So now what we've got is the Kansas City team. Now, um, Kansas City's lineup is not nearly as imposing as the White Sox lineup. And when would you have ever heard that, you know, mentioned in a sentence? Imposing White Sox lineup. But it's not. So you got Whit Merrifield. He's good. I mean, he is a legit guy. He's, he hit 302 last year with 16 homers and he stole 20 bases. So Merrifield is a legit talent. Um, Alberto Mondesi at shortstop last year wasn't the greatest of years for him. Um, he can do better. I mean, he can certainly do better. Last year he hit 263 with nine homers. So Kansas City's expecting bigger from him and he can give it. Um, then you got Hunter Dozier at third base. Now, Hunter Dozier had kind of a breakout last year. I mean, he hit 279 with 26 homers. So, um, and he's a young guy, so you got to figure he's going to continue to take steps forward. Um, so I would expect at least that from him. It's not unreasonable, certainly. And maybe he'll hit as many as 30 home runs. Who knows? Then you got, um, Orge Soler at DH. Now, Soler last year was... He was uh, legitimately awesome. He hit 265 with 48 homers. So they're going to have to, you know, the Sox are going to have to watch out for him when they're pitching to him. Alex Gordon, he's a great defensive left fielder, but he's not really much with the bat. Um, last year he hit 266 with 13 homers, which is okay. It's vanilla. Um, then you got Nicky Lopez at second base, and he was not very good. He hit 240. Bubba Starling in center field in limited play last year. He hit 215. Um, and then Ryan O'Hearn at first base, and he was not good last year at all. So, um, it, like I said, it's not an imposing lineup. You have to worry about Solaire. You have to worry a little bit about Hunter Dozier. And certainly you have to worry about Whit Merrifield getting on base and causing havoc on the base paths. Now, the rotation is really kind of a mess. I mean, if this is their rotation, I, I don't know what we really have to worry about. I mean, even their ace is like Keller. And he had a 419 earned run average last year and a 135 whip. And that's the best guy they got. Um, then you got Jacob Junis, who had a 523 earned run average last year and a 143 whip. Then Drew Smiley, who had a 624 earned run average last year. And they're going to put him in the, in the rotation. I mean, that's what I saw. I mean, I don't know. And I think they've got a new manager this year. I don't even know who that is. So, you know. Remember last time I said Ricky Renneria against Rocco Baldelli. I would take Ricky Renner. I would take uh, Rocco Baldelli anytime. I don't even know who the Kansas City manager is this year, and I would still probably say I would take him over Ricky Renneria. In case you don't figure it out yet, I really don't like Renneria. We'll see how he does, though. We have to give him a shot. I guess he deserves a shot with the new team. 
But if he can't win with this team, he's got to leave. All right, so now, um, and then, of course, you finish it out with Waka, who had a 476 earned run average and a 156 whip. And then Mike Montgomery, who had a 495 earned run average and a 162 whip last year. And this is the guy who kept telling the Cubs, I'm a starter. I deserve to start. Yeah. Well, we'll see. And then the bullpen is just, uh, I don't even, I mean, those guys, I, man. I mean, if the rotation's bad, get a load of that, that, that bullpen. First, you got Richard Lovelady, who really, with a name like that, he probably should have changed it long ago. But he had a 765 earned run average last year. Um, then you got um, Josh Stomont, and he had a 372 ERA. And then you got um, Jake Newberry, who had a 377. Kevin McCarthy, who had a 448. Um, Barnes with a 744. Lopez with a 633. Barlow with a 422. And Danny Duffy with a 434. My God. That is really... I mean, the lineup is somewhat passable. Somewhat. But that rotation and that bullpen? My God. I feel like I'm talking about the White Sox from like two years ago. So, um, yeah. And then the bench is Mabris Veloria at catcher. Um, and, um, and Brett Phillips in the outfield. They, um, I, I, you know what? When I looked up Kansas City and looked up like their, their rotation and their lineup and everything, there was a headline that said, impossible to predict Royals lineup right now. And yeah, with, with a lineup like that, I know why. Because they don't want to predict that that's what it's going to be. That's really what's going on there. So, um, that's what I got for you guys. Um, how did you like that comparison? A little better than the uh, Twins comparison because the White Sox are quite clearly better than this team. Quite clearly. So, um, you know, and and... I mean, I don't know. I didn't do the Cleveland write-up yet, so maybe I have to reconsider because maybe Cleveland is not going to finish below these guys. Um, but we'll see. They probably, they do have better pitching, but again, we'll have to see who they get rid of. So that's all I've got. That's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.